313. We're going to derive the differential equations. We'll begin by applying causality. There is one effort source. So if we apply causality to the effort source, we will get effort into a one junction. That doesn't propagate any further, so we'll go to the energy storing elements. There are two of them, the I element representing the inductor and the C element representing the capacitor. If I put the I element in integral causality, it will specify the flow into the one junction, which will propagate all the way out to the other side and specify the flow into the one junction to the right of the transformer. It just so happens that the C element ends up in integral causality. You can start with the C element and you'll end up with the same causality nonetheless. Now we want to identify the efforts and flows on the energy storing elements. For an inductor, the effort is the time rate of change of the flux linkage. The flow will be the current, which is the flux linkage divided by the inductance. For a capacitor, the flow will be the time rate of change of charge, which is a current. And the effort will be the charge divided by the capacitance, which is the voltage. If we apply our primary conditions at the left one junction, the primary condition is a common flow, which is specified by the I element as lambda over L. And if we use our transformer relationship, we know that the efforts on either side of the transformer are related through the transformer winding ratio, very similar to a gear pair. And it also relates the currents, but again, notice how the subscripts are inverted. We have I2 over I1. Now here I1 is the current on the first side. That would be lambda over L. So if we want to solve for I2, I2 is going to be equal to the winding ratio times the current on the first side which we've just determined is lambda over L. Therefore, the current here is the winding ratio times lambda over L. That's also, because of the one junction, the current at this bond and the current at this bond. Thus, we've determined by applying the primary condition at the first one junction, the current on the second side of the transformer, and as a result, the differential equation for Q dot. Now, to determine lambda dot, we need to know the voltages on either side of the transformer and I'll label them for now E1 and E2. I need to find out what E1 and E2 are. If I look at the causality, it indicates that the voltage on the second side of the transformer is the effort input into the transformer and it's then used to calculate the effort out, E1, on the first side of the transformer. So I need to figure out or calculate what E2 is. I can do so by applying my secondary condition at the one junction to the right of the transformer. The secondary condition will be a summation of efforts or in this case a summation of voltages. If we sum the voltages, we'll add E2, we will subtract Q over C, and we will subtract 
the effort associated or the voltage associated with the resistor. And to determine that voltage, we will multiply the current through the resistor by the resistance. So we'll have an R over L times N1 over N2 times lambda. And all I did was isolate the state lambda from the parameters. So now knowing that voltage, I can subtract it because the bond it's on is pointing away from the one junction. So I'll subtract an R over L times N1 over N2 times lambda. And this all sums to zero. But if we look at the one junction and pay attention to the causality, we're looking at the right hand one junction. The bond on the left has effort out of the junction. The bond above and the bond to the right, those have effort into the junction. So that means that we're going to calculate E2 as an output in terms of the other two efforts. E2 is equal to a positive Q over C plus an R over L times my winding ratio N1 over N2 times my state lambda. Now I can use the winding ratio to relate E2 to E1. E1 is equal to the winding ratio times E2. So we'll take the winding ratio and multiply it by Q over C plus R over L times N1 over N2 times lambda. Now we know the voltage on the first side of the transformer and we can now calculate our summation of voltages. We'll have a positive E of T, a negative lambda dot, and a negative E1 sum to zero. But when we sum the voltages, we notice that the bonds to the left and right of the one junction have effort into the junction and the bond atop that one junction has effort out. Hence, the output would be lambda dot and it would be E of t minus E1. Well, E1 we just determined is N1 over N2 times Q over C plus R over L times N1 over N2 times lambda. So we have two differential equations, those being the lambda dot differential equation and the Q dot differential equation we determined earlier.